Hey guys, Mr. Jansen here again, here to take you through the 100 illustrated ways to pass your science regions. Today we're talking about numbers 61 through 70. Okay, here we go. 61. Adiabatic cooling occurs as rising air expands. The air expands because the, the pressure on it is decreasing. Once again, um, it's going to come off the water here. It's going to be forced up. It's going to rise, expand, and cool. Okay, it'll expand to the dew point, form clouds. Then it will come back down on this side. It will dry compress, okay, heat up. This is called the leeward side. So windward side versus leeward side. All right. This is something you kind of have to have memorized walking in there. Okay. Um, okay, if you see it as a practice question, um, cross section below shows the prevailing winds that cause different climates on the windward and leeward sides of this mountain range. Compared to the climate on the leeward side, the conditions on the windward side are generally what? Okay, so the windward side uh, once again is going to be a lot wetter, windward wet, windward wet, and a lot cooler, okay? So it's gonna be choice one, all right? Uh, number 62, most surface water runoff occurs if the soil is bare, precipitation rate ex exceeds permeability rate, soil is saturated, and the slope of the land is too great. So once again, we're talking about what causes runoff, okay? So runoff is water kind of just running off the surface. It has no time to get into the soil. So if it's raining faster, or harder, I should say, than uh, the soil can handle, it's going to run off. If the soil is full of water, it's going to run off. Or if the slope of the land is too steep, it's going to run off. So once again, these are all different factors that can contribute to runoff. If you're going to see this as a region's question, um, it may appear like this. During a rainstorm, when is surface runoff least likely to occur? Okay. Um, well, least likely to occur means it's going into the ground. So if it's going into the ground, that's going to be when you have it raining just enough so it can go into the ground or when the permeability rate of the soil equals the rainfall rate or choice B. Okay. 63. Chemical weathering dominates in warm, humid climates. Okay. Chemical weathering, warm and wet. You, you want those conditions for the chemical reactions to occur. So you want to memorize chemical is warm and wet Okay, or warm and humid, however you want to phrase it. All right. Um, as a reasons question, it says the landscapes will undergo the most chemical weathering if the climate is what? Once again, warm and wet, or choice four. Okay. Um, so let's move on to number sixty-four. Physical weathering dominates in cold and humid climates. Okay, good for frost wedging. Okay, so cold and wet or warm and wet. Those are your two different types of weathering. Cold and wet for physical weathering. Okay. Once again. Um, ice expands when it freezes, so it's really going to get in there, and it's going to kind of wedge the rock apart. All right, and that's going to occur often, especially you know in a climate that fluctuates above and below freezing. Then you're going to get a lot of frost action going on. Okay. Um, as a reasons question, it says physical or mechanical weathering takes place mainly in these types of climates. Once again, you want it cold and wet or cold and humid. Choice A. Number 65, gravity is the force that drives erosion. Yes, okay, gravity is pulling down, so that's going to cause, you know, different types of rock slides, mud slides, um, any one of those. It also causes, you know, glaciers to creep forward, to cause streams to go downhill. Gravity is your driving force behind everything, okay? Um, for which movement of Earth's materials is gravity not the main force, okay? Uh, so once again, we're talking about something that may not necessarily be erosion, all right? And that's going to be choice B because we're talking about moisture evaporating from the ocean. Okay. Uh, number 66, streams are currently the number one agent of erosion in New York State. Okay. Streams move a tremendous amount of sediment. All right. Um, once again, uh, here they're kind of showing you that on the outside, the cut bank, there's erosion. On the inside, there's deposition. Uh, other points you want to memorize about a stream. Okay, but yes, uh, water streams, number one agent of erosion. During the past 100 years, which erosional agent has been the most dominant in changing the landscape of New York State? Okay, um, key there, past 100 years. If we're talking about the past 20,000 years, we'd be talking about glaciers. But the past 100 years, we're talking about streams, okay, or choice C. Number 67, the stream velocity depends upon slope and discharge. Once again, um, what's going to determine how fast the stream goes? Well, how much water is in it? Um, and basically, the slope, okay? Or water going through it. So this is kind of showing you your slope. The steeper it is, the faster it's going to go. And this is uh, showing you how much water is going through it, okay? So the more water um, coming out of the stream and the greater the slope, uh, the greater the velocity. 
Stream A has a deeper slope than stream B. However, the average velocity of stream B is greater than that of stream A, which is the most reasonable explanation for this, okay? So once again, um, why does stream B have a greater uh, velocity than stream A? Probably because it has more water in it, okay, or greater volume of water, all right, or choice B. Good question. 68, velocity is the greatest on the outside of the meander. We mentioned this before, okay? Uh, the water is going to have a tendency to kind of scrape along the outside, okay? It's going to kind of maintain a straight line. It's really all going to go along the outside. If you've ever been on, in a whirlpool with your friends in an above-ground pool, you kind of all run around the outside, and that's where the water is the fastest, on the outside, okay? Um, the fastest water is going to be here. You're going to have a steeper kind of cut bank on the outside bend, too, okay, from a cross-sectional view. Um, map below shows the path of a river. The arrow shows the direction the river is flowing. Letters A and B identify the banks of the river. Okay, the water depth near bank A, um, excuse me, the water depth is greater near bank A than bank B because the water velocity near A is what? Well, it's going to be a lot faster here. Okay, and that's where all your erosion is going to be. All right. Uh, number sixty-nine. Heavy round and dense particles settle out first. Okay, in still water, if you drop it in, the heaviest. The roundest and the densest are going to get to the bottom first, okay? So if you drop in a whole, mix, uh, a whole mess of mixed sediment, you're basically going to have, you know, this kind of vertical sorting going on where you have the biggest at the bottom and the smallest at the top, okay? Um, you know, you can kind of use your reference tables here to kind of see what's going on. Uh, the table below shows the density of four mineral samples. If the shape and size of the four mineral samples are the same, which mineral will settle most slowly in water? Most slowly means it's going to go down the slowest, so it's going to have the least density. So we're talking about quartz here, or 2.7. And number 70, water sorts sediments uh, by size vertically with the biggest sediments on the bottom, only when the sediments uh, settle in still water. So once again, in still water, the biggest stuff will going to go to the bottom first, and the small stuff is going to be on top of that. We call this vertical sorting. There's horizontal sorting too. We'll get into that later. But vertical sorting is the biggest on the bottom, smallest on the top. If we were to see this as a regions question, um, it may look something like this. Okay. Well, quartz particles of varying sizes are dropped at the same time into the deep calm water. Which cross section best represents the part of the settling pattern of these particles? So once again, the biggest on the bottom, the smallest on the on the top, nice and sorted. That would be choice number three. Or it could be like this one. Which cross-sectional diagram best shows how a mixture of sediment particles of equal density would settle in a still lake? Once again, biggest on the bottom, smallest on the top, or choice three. Thank you for watching. Um, that was number 61 to 70 on the 100 illustrated ways to pass the earth science regions. Uh, please stay tuned to our next video.